So Game Maker Studio 2.3 has introduced a couple new things. I'm not going to go over that for the umpteenth time. You probably know what they are by now. One of those things is structs. Um, I can create myself a struct. Uh, you can either use a constructor or you can use one of these anonymous blobs, as I like to call them. You can give them some data. Let's go with the, uh, let's go with X, Y, Z. We can, we can assign some values to these. And, uh, those are all numbers. Let's give it something else. Let's give it a... Let's give it a string value in there somewhere. And this is a struct. You can access the things inside it using the dot operator. Struct.x, struct.y, struct.z, struct.something else. Those are structs. They're pretty great. You can also, uh, and this is something that you often don't really use outside of debugging, but you can uh, convert them to strings. You can pass them into the string function, and this will convert the struct to a string. It will return a string that is uh, that represents the contents of the struct. And you can show message the value of that string, and you're going to see the string representation of the struct. Uh, you can see that these these members are neither in alphabetical order. Actually, they do happen to be in alphabetical order, but that is purely coincidental. Uh, these are not in order. They're not in the order that they were defined or anything anything like that. Um, if you included something else in here, you would find that the uh, the variable names may well be random. Things inside structs are not stored in any useful order. That's just something that has to do with the way that they are designed. Uh, you also don't have to use the string function on a struct if you want to pass it into show message. I think most people sort of implicitly understand this, but it's rarely stated out loud. If you pass something into the show message function or into show debug message or something, it will automatically be uh, converted to a string re regardless of whether or not you actually do it. Um, that's not the point of this video. That's just a, uh, a bit of a fun fact. You can see that's exactly what we had the first time. I'm finally doing that one thing that someone told me about in the YouTube comments a few weeks ago. Um, I believe it was uh, Carl in the YouTube comments told me that, you know, instead of trying to like close the game or X out of the game or whatever every time when, when you're just working out of one of these um, auto run scripts, you can just like create yourself an object and put game end in the step event and, and throw the object in the room because it's not like you're doing anything else with objects. And yeah, as much as I'd like to, I, I can't really argue with that. Anyway, getting back to the point. The string that you get when you stringify a struct is not that is not that good looking. It looks kind of like JSON, but it's not really JSON. And if you got a lot of stuff inside your struct, if you got a bunch of variables that belong to the struct, um, it can be kind of hard to read. And maybe not all those variables are relevant to what you're trying to do. And it would be nice if there was an automatic way to format this in a somewhat prettier looking fashion. And as it turns out, there is something. If you create a, mes a method named toString, and again, you can do this in either a um, you can do this in either a, a, a struct with a constructor, or one of these anonymous blobs, where you just sort of define things in a JSON-like manner. Uh, you can uh, return a string, and it can contain whatever you want. So it can just return a a single string. containing a message, which isn't isn't the most helpful thing in the world, but it'll get the point across. Uh, you can see now if I run the game and uh, pass the struct into the show message function or into the string function or something, the toString method will automatically be called. And instead of returning the default whatever, uh, it will instead return this is a struct! Exclamation mark in all lowercase letters. If instead you want to actually show some useful information about the struct, you can say, uh, you can format it. Like this, and this will print out the X, Y, and Z values in parentheses. It will not, it will just completely ignore the banana value, but nobody, nobody cares about the banana value. And this could, uh, and this will, will sort of represent this as a, uh, as a coordinate. Um, as a point in space, that's sort of the convention for representing points in space coordinates are the three values inside parentheses like this. If you have a vector, if you have a struct which represents a vector, which is kind of what you could think of this as, I guess, because it has X, Y, Z, but it's also got whatever this is down here. Um, this could be useful. It could be useful to have a two-string method that, that goes something like this if you want to print out the, um, 
the values. Again, it could be very useful while debugging. If you don't want to have to scan through with your eyeballs the, um, the sort of spaghetti that it prints out by default, uh, and you want to have an easier way to see what, what the struct contains, the, uh, the toString method could be kind of useful. It could also be useful if you have something that looks more like, I'm going to get rid of all this and instead make something representing like an NPC. NPC name is going to be first name I thought of. Uh, you can have a name, you can have like an age. That's my age. And you could have like a class or something. Uh, you could use two string and say, um, you could return something like this in the two string method. And this would suddenly, uh, this would suddenly sort of return a string representing like a mini profile of this NPC character, whatever it happens to be, whoever it is. And you could use this for debugging. You could use this for gameplay purposes if you want to, um, like show a bunch of NPC classes, names, and other information in a list or something in a log somewhere, and show it to the player. You could use the two string method for that purpose. It's kind of handy. Note that you don't have to automatically call the, uh, or I should say, note that you don't have to manually call the two-string method yourself, although you can if you want to. Uh, obviously, this is nothing, there's nothing really special about this. Uh, this is just um, a method which GameMaker will look for to see if you possess uh, when you're converting something to a string. You don't have to call this manually. It can be handy. I, um, I sort of feel like I don't use this as often as maybe I should. I feel like if I were to use the two string method uh, more often, it might make it, I might, it might give me an easier time for certain things like debugging or um, like returning string summaries of, of an NPC to show on the screen to the player or something. It's worth noting, by the way, that if you were to create a struct with a constructor, you can still do this. You just obviously have to use the equal sign to assign the, the function to the struct instead of using the colon as you would with the anonymous struct. Also, this will not work with GameMaker instances. If you create a GameMaker instance with one of the instance create functions and give it a two-string method and then try and convert the reference to the instance to a string, uh, it will just show you the instance ID. The instance ID is just a number. GameMaker doesn't know the difference between that and an instance automatically. Unlike structs, which it knows is a reference to an actual struct and not just a random ID somewhere. Anyway, I'm going to end this off here. This is a shorter video. Uh, this is one of the more obscure things you can do in GameMaker that may, that you may find helpful. If I find, and I'm sure I will over the course of time, if I find other interesting tricks like this that you can do in GameMaker that aren't super well documented and that maybe not a lot of people know about, I will make videos on them, uh, get the word out a little bit maybe. But until then, that's it. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one Let's Make a Tower Defense game. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found that interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Kiara Elizabeth, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Koyo, Posho, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.